chapter on Olympic leverages, contending food standards and the struggle for a sustainability legacy, discusses existing issues in Japanese food standards and the challenges and chances that come with the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics. Japanese customers tend to think domestic produce is safer than imported food, even after the radioactive contamination around Fukushima after March 2011. And they hold great trust in their country's food safety measures. In reality, however, Japan is one of the few OECD countries that is yet to make the HACCP or Global Gap food safety standards mandatory. This is actually seen as a problem, especially for the planned expansion of food exports in order to revitalize the Japanese economy in the so-called abenomics. Organic agriculture is also still very rare in Japan and eco-labeling or animal welfare concerns are rather unknown. The Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics 2020, however, are considered a potential driver of change here. Tokyo 2020 organizers are also aiming to present Japanese hospitality and food, washoku, to the world during this global event. But while the last two Olympics, especially the London Olympics in 2012, already set the bar rather high in terms of sustainable and organic food procurement, the sustainable sourcing code for Tokyo 2020 is criticized for lowering these standards again. Some NPOs are hoping to make use of the increased international attention during the Olympics as a form of foreign pressure, or gaiatsu, on Japanese lawmakers and businesses. And they have started agenda-setting campaigns to influence public opinion and push for more awareness of sustainability and environmental issues, animal welfare and organic agriculture. I am interested in agri-food systems and their globalization, with a focus mainly on one specific sector in Japanese food production, namely fisheries. One angle to approach this field is studying transformation processes in rural fishing communities, predominantly characterized by small-scale coastal fisheries. What is particularly interesting right now is the restructuring of fishing rights and resource management here. Japanese fishery cooperatives are co-managing these fisheries as a kind of territorially bounded common resource. But recent fishery law reform pushes for the entrance of outside corporate capital in order to boost investments, especially in aquaculture, and enhance the Japanese self-sufficiency rate in seafood production. At the same time, this reform is also introducing stronger top-down regulation and management of fish stocks based on individual quotas. The issue of sustainability standards for the Tokyo Olympics ties in with my research on discourses of sustainability and their re renegotiation in Japan. For example, I also describe in the chapter how um, Japanese MPOs and foreign foundations are promoting new regimes of fishery conservation. I am interested in how such specific concepts of sustainability are promoted and contested. Looking at the inertia of official regulations, civil society pressure and business initiatives might indeed be more promising, even if the latter are only triggered by the fear of foreign criticism or bashingu in Japanese. But relying on the private sector also comes at a price. Market-based resource governance, such as the certification scheme by the Marine Stewardship Council, MSC, and international hegemonic standards and private labels like the European Global Gap, can wield considerable power over typically bio-driven agricultural global commodity chains. I argue that in the end, the contest over food procurement at Tokyo 2020 is played out within this context of global power struggles to define food and sustainability standards.
Well, if the Olympics were cancelled or held without visitors in the end, this would surely reduce the conservationist and animal welfare activists' leverage to push for change in the near future. For example, practices such as gestation crates, forced molting and battery cages, which are now forbidden in the EU, at least theoretically, are still used by most producers in Japan. In 2018, Japanese animal rights activists had supported the global campaign of some Olympians demanding 100% cage-free eggs and 100% stall-free pork, calling for a boycott of animal products at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games venues otherwise. If the pandemic crisis remains unresolved and Japan continues to ban foreigners from entering Japan, this strategy of gaiatsu will be toothless in the short to medium term. On the other hand, the postponement might have bought food producers a little more time to shift production standards and adapt to a stricter sustainability sourcing code, had it been established. The main explanation by the Tokyo 2020 Organizing Committee for not upholding the London 2012 standards was the need to adapt to the Japanese realities of hardly existent organic agriculture, which would have made it impossible, for example, to procure only certified organic or cage-free eggs for the games. At the same time, the pandemic has also uprooted production networks <clears throat> and logistics, especially in food provisioning, while also monopolizing public attention. So issues pertaining to sustainability in general are at risk of being overlooked in the COVID-19 crisis. <laughs>